Notebook helps us write our resolutions and plans for every year. I think everyone needs one. When you have that in your plan, every morning you wake up and write what you're going to do. I'm going to do this, and at the end of the day, you tick it. Why not? This will only help you achieve what you want in life. Welcome to the life I live. My name is Susan Yawar, your new BC. Today I'm in Chambugo. Where I'm seated here, I can see the whole of Kampala. If I'm not mistaken, I can see UBC. The whole of Kampala, Mother Hill. Where well, I have a doctor, I don't know if he's a doctor or a professor, he's yet to tell me. So welcome. Hi. Thank you. How are you? You're going to tell us your name briefly, then we can pick from there. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I am uh, Dr. Lutalo Chinji Sam, and that is my side name. I am Dev. Um, and that is my identity. Okay, today we have Dr. Simon Lutalo on the show. We have Dr. Simon Lutalo because we have the Awareness Week for the Personal, the Deaf Society. So today Dr. Simon, Dr. Samuel is going to take us through most of the things that we are going to go through in the week of the Awareness. Let's first start by knowing who he is. Then from knowing who he is, then we shall come to that part why he's here with us today. Uh, someone out there would want to know who is Dr. Samuel Lutalo. Let's start from your childhood. Who was this young doctor from the childhood? Our home is, our home was, then the schools you attended. Then after then we shall know, are you a doctor? Are you a teacher? I'm not so confused among the two. <coughs> um. Okay, as I've told you, I am Sam Lutalo, and uh, we in Chambogo, and uh, it's where I work. I, uh, I teach, I do research, and I basically uh, focus on to Uganda Sign Language um, at different levels, from a certificate to a, to a master's level. And uh, I do research in the deaf community, linguistics, and... Um, I was born deaf. I wasn't born hearing in any way, though I was born to a hearing parents. <coughs> and uh, our home is in Itinda. That's where I've grown up. Uh, in the time of uh, during the reign of Amin, in uh, and that war that we had, that time I had we had challenges. We didn't have uh, schools for deaf deaf children and uh, so I was taken to Kenya. I studied from Mumias uh, from a school and it is where I started from and uh, by then the transport means were also a hurdle. So <clears throat> every other time you could uh, you know board uh, so many uh, vehicles on the road to, to Kenya. So it was uh, such a uh, uh, an, an, an amazing experience anyway. I thank my parents and my mother in particular who really took that uh, uh, responsibility. And eventually I was taken to Nyangoma, uh, Nyangoma, where technical school, where I did, it was only um, an institute for deaf boys. Uh, it was for male. <clears throat> because previously there was no secondary education, second education for deaf persons completely. And so I did and started electrical engineering. And uh, after my completion, uh, I came back to the country, to Uganda. And uh, the mere fact is that there was no um, schools in the country, in Uganda then, I felt... Uh, in the future, we needed to have uh, to change a system. Our society could change and have uh, Uganda Sign Language. So, uh, how I came to the university is uh, I worked with the Uganda National Association for the Deaf, 
And uh, we basically, I was into the area of advocacy and, and language. By then, we didn't have uh, the sign language that we see today, which is now Uganda sign language. So uh, I got so much interested in it, and I got an opportunity to study from Denmark. And uh, eventually, I also went to, uh, to, to UK, England, is where I did my degree, my master's, and my PhD. That attend my PhD in sign linguistics. In Africa, I am the only person who has uh, this, this PhD. We have about over 54 countries, and it is only me with uh, sign linguistics in, in the, on the continent. So, but, but it's challenging, though it is a pride to be with this kind of, uh, you know, uh, education. So my interest is to sensitize and encourage advocates of education of deaf persons. Okay, I think we have got everything about Dr. Lutalo. We are with Dr. Lutalo, who is a researcher, and you have heard from him, I think, everything. He has said everything for himself. Let's look at the, which year was this that you went to Kenya? Um, 1977, 1977, around there, so when I started my lower primary. So primary. after then, which year, did you come, which year did you come back to Uganda? Um, for eight years, I used to be traveling in the country and out of the country until the 80s. For an, in, in a period of about, uh, in 19, 19, 19, 1990, is when I came back to the country and started studying from here to upgrade my uh, technical skills. And uh, But by that time, I was also working with UNAD on certain projects, short projects. But uh, uh, previously, uh, before we had Chambogo, I worked into UNISI, Uganda National Institute of Special Education. And uh, by then we were funded by Danida. And uh, in those short courses is uh, where I actually got an interest of going to, the, to Denmark to, Im to, 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 to improve and upgrade on my studies. So, um, uh, I worked on a project where we had a dictionary of Uganda Sign Language Dictionary in 2006. And after the completion of the dictionary is when I, say I, I left this country when I got scholarship to go to, to England. And so I stayed in England for about eight years doing my degree, master's and PhD. So since 2014 I've been here. Okay, we have had that also. That That's so interesting. Let's look at some of the challenges and the challenges that you face personally. Now that you teach, uh, we want again another challenge. Someone out there would pick from you because you interact with many people who are in the deaf community. Let's first look at the challenges personally you face as a person. Then you'll tell us more about those who come to you and be like, okay, these are some of the challenges in our community. Um, you see, w when you hear, you have about two, you have two worlds. You have a world of the deaf and a world of the hearing. So uh, when you have these two worlds together, usually the challenge is communication barrier. And uh, it's just like you. You hear, you speak, and I can't, I can't hear, and I, so I, I use a language. So usually when we meet, there must be there must be a bridge, and that bridge is the sign language interpreter. In this perspective, again, the sign language interpreter, and so uh, <clears throat> at least you need to have colleagues who are fluent signers, and the mere fact that we have a diploma in Uganda sign language, it is an opportunity that it helps train different people. And just as we are today, I and you are managing to communicate because there is an interpreter bridging up this gap. Uh, me, I only appreciate my mother that uh, uh, she exposed me. She moved with me on different occasions, different, uh, you know, functions, even though I couldn't know details on what was going on because I didn't have, uh, uh, we, we didn't have a communication uh, language that we could easily use. 
And uh, uh, they, I can give a simple scenario where I, w I was taken to uh, Forumbe, a funeral rite. And so I put, I dressed on well on my suit, and in the night I realized people are drumming. I couldn't really understand. And, and, and I asked mom, why are they drumming? But mom couldn't explain the story. So, um, so it is important that uh, I give the opportunity to know all these other things, even though I couldn't be explained to details, but at least uh, it could open up my world of knowledge. And so it is uh, the challenge that I face today, uh, a communication barrier, as it is for other deaf persons. It is the same challenge. And uh, for the other deaf persons may not have got the opportunity like I got to move with my mother everywhere. Children are kept home, and so they don't know. But it is important that you have these children move with every other time. Let them know. Let them look at those other things that they're not actually used to. And uh, I think as a country, we also need the policies uh, to make sure there is real accessibility. For example, we talk in, today we have we in a pandemic, COVID-19, and uh, you, you don't have a, adequate access to information for deaf for, for, for deaf persons. You need the interpreters to be in position to deliver this kind of content. It is not delivered, and uh, you know I pay taxes just as you ordinary persons, hearing persons do. So we need to access information just as uh, just as the other person. So I would encourage your parents to do whatever they can to learn the sign language, let them at least try gesturing and so that they can communicate with the children. If Dr. Samuel Talo's mother kept him indoors and said, no, you will not go out with me, today we would not have him to hear and today he would not be at the university. I think for parents, you need to give your kids rights to do whatever is right for them. If it's going to school, take them to school. We all know we have sign language schools around, some are even for free if I'm not mistaken, if I'm mistaken, I stand to be corrected. Uh, you need to take these kids to interact with other kids so that they can be active, not only keeping them, and when they see someone, you tell this child, get inside, you'll come after the guest has left. We still have Dr. Lutalo. Dr. Lutalo, let's look at solutions, and solutions that are going to get us to go. These solutions, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not only looking at your society, I'm looking at a situation whereby we are going to sort everything in this awareness week that everyone is going to know there is these people in the society. This is how we are supposed to handle them. This is what we are supposed to do to them. When I meet this other person, you're going to look at the job market. When this person, the deaf, come to our job market, what do we expect from them? What are we supposed to do? Let's first start with the solution in the down society where someone is no, supposed to know their rights. Um, thank you. Um, I think in the Deaf Awareness Week, uh, it is a celebration uh, where we, we, we expect to, um, you know, come together, but also work together. And uh, this, is, this, is, this is the current theme we're going to work on. And uh, as we, we talk about inclusiveness, we must make sure that all of us are included. You see, the challenge with deafness, you don't realize that someone is deaf, not until you face a barrier of communication. And uh, <clears throat> my, 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 my experience with COVID, I think we've had a lot of, uh, we've had a lot of challenges. You see, communication is on a, it's a visual language, and our, our language, and uh, you, when, when people mask up, then communication is going to be limited in some way. Uh, I, I need to appreciate government in this way that uh, in the constitution of the republic of this country, 1995, they recognized and promote, they, they promised to promote sign language. So it is something that we need to, to, to uphold. And so it is for taxis, you know, uh, that someone can easily, you know, they, when, when a conductor is trying to, 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 to tell you, we are going, we, I'm going this direction, you can't know which direction, but they will point. And so you will see that gesture. But it is important that we adjust to make sure that we have a sign posts along the way and there is, a, you know, figures and numbers for, for codes for the locations and places. So it would ease 
on the on the movement and the communication i need to appreciate ubc ubc uh, you have uh, interpreters during your news bulletins and uh, I think uh, you've done a great job, but it's not a job well done. You still need to do too much because it is not only about the summary of uh, the news because it's about just 20% of what is aired. So I think it is important that deaf persons get to know all this kind of detail so that we sit wherever we are and feel comfortable and feel included in the society. And, and, and the guest sharing is okay. All of us can try to do something. And uh, if we have, we have numbers, for example, we need to, to make sure that most of uh, whatever we do is much more visual. And uh, <clears throat> for, the government, for the government's work, uh, UBC is a government entity, we need to make sure that we fund a lot of interpreters to come and study so that we increase on the number. On, 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 on the cases, what I told you about COVID, COVID, so many deaf persons have been imp imprisoned. They have taken, been taken to prison, and deaf persons don't know what is going on. And uh, some of them, when they take them to, to, to prisons and they bring them to court, they realize they can't, they can't communicate the way they think. And so uh, it is important that we have friends, family, all of us communicate. And we must make sure that Uganda said language is a, a mode of communication for all of us, is uh, the, the barriers. The law society for under person with disability, I think they have rights for every person with disability. If I'm not mistaken, they do that. I think uh, we should call upon them to be visiting at least once in a while in prisons to know if there's someone like person, a deaf person in the prison, and why is this person there? I think that goes to the law society because they, we have that other department for person with disability. I'm going out for a break and I'm coming back to get to know, well, let's look at the employment part of it, whereby he's going to take us through what does he think is supposed to be done for the deaf in the employment sector? What is supposed to be done for person with disability in the employment sector? You are on the life I live. with Dr. Lutalo. Let's look at the employment sector. Uh, being a leader, at least, you're going to tell us what we can do. In this Awareness Week, let's know what we can do as the society. I would want to hire someone with uh, physical disability, but you know there is this saying that if I brought someone who is deaf, I must bring a signing language interpreter. To the employment sector, this looks like it's a burden to them. It looks like uh, too much of expenses. Like I have to hire two people at the same time. Let's talk about that. Maybe someone out there would know how best it would be for someone to hire Dr. Lutalo. Um, thank you. From my experience, for example, I've worked with uh, Chambog University for, for now over 20 years. And uh, recruiting, recruiting of interpreters is really a challenge, is really a big, a big problem. And uh, from research, is uh, many, many persons with disabilities have missed opportunities. And, uh, and, and, and it's also not possible that when you're recruiting a, a wonderful person, so you should recruit one interpreter. What happens in a, in, in a situation that this interpreter falls sick? What will happen to the deaf person that you're recruiting? So um, I, I, would, I would pick it up from the W Persons with Disabilities Act 2020. But also uh, looking at the sustainable development goals, they encourage recruitment and uh, inclusiveness of persons with disabilities. So uh, it is important that we give persons with disabilities opportunities, and that is generally where we can easily achieve. I don't think we need actually need to give excuses of, of double burdens and being expensive. It is some way that we can bring about inclusiveness. In, uh, in, in a society where we are operating, we have over 40 million people. And so uh, you, you, in your company, you only need about 10 or so people. You mean we can give an excuse of such a number out of the 40 million? I think we need to give priority to persons with disabilities. Let's give an opportunity to deaf persons, give opportunity to interpreters, because it is a human right.
for someone to to access to access um, information. So uh, I would request government and the private sector, public and private sector, to recruit recruit uh, persons with disabilities and give opportunities to interpreters as well to provide a service. And we need to advocate for good pay. Yeah. Okay, I think you've heard from the horse's mouth because if he says yes, his advice is working. Because if I said it myself, you'd say, but Susan, since when are you, are you their spokesperson? I am not. I'm just here to give them a platform to speak for themselves, and that's my right also. Uh, let's look at situation. You have traveled. You have traveled. Uh, I'm going to ask it on a personal level. Do you travel with your interpreter or you travel alone? Oh, thank you, Susan. This is a good question. Uh, you, 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 need, you need to remember that I studied from Kenya, as I told you. And uh, I, 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 I told mom, uh, I think I have, I'm a grown-up. You don't have to walk with me every other time, everywhere. You can have someone 24 hours. Uh, at a certain point, someone gains independence. So if you're talking about a visually impaired person, a plain person, I mean, it is understandable to walk with a guide for every other time. For me, when I'm, when I'm leaving this country, if I'm having a flight, I will go alone. If I'm going, for, if I'm going for a conference, for example, it is understandable to go with my professional interpreter to, to, to be in position to communicate during my presentations. Uh, however, if I'm moving as, a, as me on my personal missions, I move alone. And uh, there are private activities, there are private businesses you would need to do. And you, I would use gestures with that person and would also write. So you ha we have different ways on how we could manage such, such situations. Uh, there are the persons who can even speak, postlinguals, those who have attained speech before, because, be, before deafening. So... Uh, if uh, there is a meeting, for example, and I'm invited for a meeting, I'll move with two interpreters. And uh, and for those countries that have been have been to before UK, in, um, uh, USA, they understand what interpreting services mean. And if I have a conference in the USA, they would even allow to give me two interpreters to go and uh, work with me during such a conference. Okay, so we have known like. When he travels, what he does. Eh? I think you've heard what he does when he travels. Uh, I want a moment of yourself, you yourself, that you're going to tell me, you're going to tell someone on the life I live, you're going to tell someone on UBC, at least this moment is unforgettable. It might be better, good, fair, or bad. This moment made you be like, if I had a chance, I would do it again. Um... A moment, a moment, a moment that uh, I can't forget uh, that has uh, created much of me is when I moved with my mom and, uh, and, and she really exposed me into, into, into the public and I got to learn the culture. She educated me on, the, on everything, on the house chores, cooking and doing everything, just like an able, able person. So... Uh, um, may her soul rest in peace. She passed on. We're no longer living with her. And uh, so she gave me a challenge. And uh, my parents always gave me a challenge. They never discriminated me because that is discrimination. To say that is a special child, so should be kept um, uh, indoors. I was with my siblings, my brothers and sisters, and we worked together. But also the other the other time is uh, the most challenging time I think uh, where I had issues is when I I needed to access a, a driving license uh, where the policemen uh, always ask me now if you want a driving license how will you li how would you listen to someone hooting and so we had a real dialogue real 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 serious talk with the, with, with the policemen. And uh, I also asked them, uh, so what, what would happen if it was so rainy and uh, it, they hooted? What would you do? But many times I've had challenges with driving, and uh, when you meet the traffic officers, they stop you, request for the permit, you give them the permit, and, uh, and they say, you're deaf, how are you driving? And eventually 
to allow you moving. So I think it is a good sensitization and we must make sure that this happens so that we can be included. We need to encourage each other to make sure that uh, deaf persons can be, can be with us. And parents, I think I need to, to, to call upon parents. You need to share with your children, give them information, try as much as you can. And so as we go into the Deaf Awareness Week, we need to grow together. We need, we need, we need to work together. And uh, Susan, there is a very big challenge in the hospitals for mothers seeking out natal care. I think there is need to have special priority for mothers with uh, disabilities so that they can be given that first, you know, the moment they come in, let them get, 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 get attention. And we must have open, open door welcome policy where persons come in and you allow them to get in. And I will also call upon the judicial officers, the policemen. Please, police officers, when you hold, when, when you arrest a, a deaf person, don't hand up, uh, handcuff the, both hands. At least handcuff one so that they can be in position to communicate. It's just like you're holding their mouth not to speak. So um, you need to find out when you meet this kind of person. It is important that you ask this person, are you deaf or you're hearing? So that they can be in position and, 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 and be in position to communicate to you. Persons with deaf, deafness are suffering and they're suffering in the prisons. So I think it is important that we change on our, on our, on our ways. And the LODC, uh, Law Society, should be in a position to provide pro bono services, legal services, so that we access information equally. I want to ask this question to myself. I don't know who is going to answer me. Do we have nurses who do sign language? Uh, I would say yes, but uh, this has happened over, I think, 10 years ago. So currently, and it was we don't about have a them. fund, and when the fund um, was no more, it is uh, we don't have them. So I, I, government should be in a position to take up these uh, kind of, uh, um, of, of priorities to fund the training of nurses. I am I'm happy to, to inform the public that the Judicial Service Commission of Letter started an initiative to train their uh, practicing lawyers. Uh, Dr. Lutalo, uh, I want you to make a comment as the last a comment and advice to the society that someone out there who is on the life I live and who is on UBC will take and pick up a lesson from there. Um, I need to thank UBC for this opportunity and so it should be uh, uh, for the other TVs for giving opportunities to interpreters to work on your TVs. I give a general comment to the media houses. Those small boxes that you're giving the interpreters are too small. We need to make sure that we increase the sizes on um, our, our interpreters because at the end of the day you, you strain watch to get to know what is happening when you go on ubc you go to ntv you go to nbs it is you seeing the same story and so i think if, if I, I don't know whether you have a law that took a decision that that should be the size we need to make sure that we change is it a company law within the media houses if you compared with england you really have a full person and he's signing and, 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 and the society should get that opportunity. And, and you see, if you have for the hearing, if you, you say a news anchor is a full person reading the news and so you don't have the interpreter, we actually have another society that you don't realize, the deaf blind persons. We have those who are partially blind. And so they also strain much to watch what is being said in those boxes. So I feel we need to increase. President Museveni, when he's communicating, uh, they make sure that they don't want to have an interpreter nearby. Mr. President, let these interpreters be near. They are let them come. As you're communicating, we are also listening. We can, we can, we can borrow from, from the USA, where we've had President Trump communicate, giving an address, and they have an interpreter besides them. I mean, this is an opportunity for us because we're citizens, and it is our right. Uh, my name is Susan Yawar. My show airs out every Monday, 8.30 p.m.
8.30 p.m. And I'll repeat runs every Wednesday, 11.30 a.m. Here we believe I can, you can, we can. Like the sea meets